Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Number 5. Isaac Turnborough In 2002, Declan Lyons was found dead outside of the pizza restaurant where he worked, with a gaping bullet wound in the head. The attack was completely unprovoked, and officers were confused to why someone would have killed Lyons. A month after the incident, Declan's co-worker, Isaac Turnborough, was taking magic mushrooms at a party when he admitted to six friends that he had murdered Declan, as well as other things including being responsible for the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Following the shocking news, one of his friends told Turnborough's mother, who then reportedly contacted the police. When the case went to trial in 2004, the jury acquitted Turnborough, as it turned out that he was high from smoking pot and taking magic mushrooms. Many years later in 2011, Isaac confessed to the police that he had in fact killed his fellow co-worker Declan Lyons with his 3030 Winchester rifle. However, due to a clause in the Fifth Amendment known as Double Jeopardy, Isaac was totally immune from prosecution, because he couldn't be tried for the same crime twice. Since Isaac had already been both tried and cleared of Lyon's murder, he was essentially a free man. Number 4. Edward Mybridge Edward Mybridge was an English photographer most recognised for his pioneering work in photographic studies of motion. In 1874, Mybridge discovered that his wife was having an affair with a drama critic named Harry Larkins, and he sought to do something about it. Mybridge travelled to California in order to track down his wife's lover, which he'd successfully did. Upon locating him, Mybridge said, Good evening, Major. My name is Mybridge, and here's the answer to the letter you sent my wife, before shooting Larkins at point-blank range through the hunt. Mybridge was subsequently arrested, and during his trial in 1875, the jury claimed that Mybridge was justified in murdering Larkins. In other words, the famous photographer was acquitted on the grounds of justifiable homicide, meaning he could always scot free with the murder. Number 3. Lizzie Borden The name Lizzie Borden is synonymous with axe murders and many folk rhymes, such as Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. On the morning of August 4th in 1892, Lizzie Borden's father, Andrew, and stepmother, Abby, were victims of a brutal hatchet attack, and were mutilated in their Fall River home. Lizzie Borden was the only suspect in the Savage Axe murder, of her father and stepmother. However, she was found not guilty, despite evidence placing her at the scene of the crime. Lizzie's answers to police questioning were at times strange and contradictory. There were various inconsistencies in her alibi, and on the day of the murders, she also attempted to buy poison. Moreover, police investigations found two axes and two hatchets in the basement, with one of the hatchets having a broken handle, missing the head. If evidence wasn't already suggesting enough, Lizzie also was caught burning a dress which prosecutors later alleged was stained with blood, possibly to cover up her crimes. However, Lizzie explained that she was burning the dress because it was covered in paint. Even though evidence strongly suggested that Lizzie committed the murders, she was acquitted of all charges, and in a verdict that was deliberated in only an hour and a half. Number 2. Joseph Mengele Auschwitz's infamous angel of death, Joseph Mengele, experimented on the camp's prisoners, mainly on children. Mengele would save adults and children from the gas chambers, only to conduct horrific experiments on them without anaesthetic. He was particularly interested in identical twins, people with different coloured eyes, dwarves, and people with physical abnormalities. Some of Mengele's twisted experiments included removing organs from his victims, amputating limbs, injecting ink into victims' eyeballs, transferring blood from one twin to another, thus causing infection, and vivisecting pregnant women, as well as the baby. Mengele even attempted to make conjoined twins by sewing two children together. After the Second World War ended, Mengele fled to South America, where he was free from arrest and protected from extradition. He lived until the age of 67, which if you ask me, is 67 years too long. Number 1. OJ Simpson 
Perhaps one of the most famous legal cases in history is that of O.J. Simpson's. In 1994, Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman, were found murdered, having been viciously stabbed to death outside of Brown's condominium in Los Angeles. Evidence placed O.J. Simpson at the scene of the crime, with his Bruno Magli shoes and bloodied footprints matching Simpson's DNA. Bloody socks at O.J. Simpson's home later even tested positive for Nicole and Ronald's blood. Simpson's friend and defense attorney, Robert Kardashian, was seen carrying Simpson's garment bag, which the prosecutors speculated may have contained Simpson's bloody clothes or even the murder weapon. By the end of the trial, O.J. Simpson was found not guilty of the murders and thus was a free man. Many suspected that the evidence such as the blood-stained glove at the scene of the crime, which didn't fit, were partially responsible for the overall verdict. If it doesn't fit, then you must acquit was the famous phrase used by the lawyer Johnny Cochran in order to persuade the jury that Simpson did not murder Nicole and Ronald. Do you think OJ Simpson killed them? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.